How's it going everybody? So this is something I've wanted to do for a very long time and you guys have absolutely blown me up recently. So I appreciate it and I really wanted to get into this. So I am, if you can't tell from the tattoos, a couple of people have mentioned it. I'm a huge Tolkien fan. I have wanted to work my way through a lot of my favorites from Tolkien while giving homage to the great and only smoking Capstan Blue, which was supposedly Tolkien's favorite smoke. So we're gonna start that today. I'm gonna go ahead and start with The Hobbit and we're gonna read for a little while and enjoy that in our corn cob with some Capstan Blue Original Navy Cut Ready Rubbed. I've had this uh, out in the open and aging for probably about mm, year, year and a half now. So this should be nice and well, ooh, well aged. Just the, just that clean, fresh, straight hay smell that you expect with that capstan. Well, this is gonna be an awesome start to the series. I am I am truly a huge Tolkien nerd. So this isn't gonna start stop with just The Hobbit. After this, we'll move on to The Lord of the Rings. I have the Similarian, the uh, entire series of History of Middle Earth, and a bunch of others. So we'll work through all of them. This is something I've personally wanted to do for a while, so I'm super excited to get started to do this. So, let's pack this first bowl up here. Just feels right packing a bowl right before you start The Hobbit. For the past probably four or five years now, I've been actually reading The Hobbit, The Lord of the Rings, and for the past two years, I've been reading The Similarian every single year. I think this year I've already done The Hobbit, The Lord of the Rings, The Similarian, and I really got into the, um, what is it? Is it Tales of Numenor? It was a new one that came out and I really, really liked it. It was good. We will circle back to that one. One of my favorite stories is actually The Fall of Gondolin, if you haven't read that. So, now we got our first bowl of the Capstan Blue, nice and ready. So, let's just enjoy, take our time here. Bonus points to anybody that can tell me what the writing on my arm says. All right, now we got our pipe all set. Give me my holder here. This is probably my favorite one. Bought this about 10 years ago and I have just absolutely loved reading this copy ever since. Nice and well-worn, all beat up and dented over years of, ex of abuse. So let's get right into this. Cheers. Hmm. I 
I can see why it was a favorite. This capstan is great. So don't mind me. I know I don't have the best voice, but I'm gonna still read anyway. Chapter one, an unexpected party. In a hole in the ground there lived a hobbit, not a nasty, dirty, wet hole filled with the ends of worms and oozy smells, nor yet a bare, dry, sandy hole with nothing in it to sit down on or eat. It was a hobbit hole, and that means comfort. It had a perfectly round door with a pothole painted green with a shiny yellow brass knob in the exact middle. The door opened onto a tube-shaped hall like a tunnel, a very comfortable tunnel without smoke, with paneled walls and floors tiled and carpeted, provided with polished chairs and lots and lots of pegs for hats and coats. The Hobbit was, was fond of visitors. The tunnel wound on and on, going fairly, but not quite, straight into the side of the hill. The hill, as all the people for many miles round called it, and many little round doors opened out of it, first on one side and then the other. No, no going upstairs for the hobbit. Bedrooms, bathrooms, cellars, pantries, lots of these. Wardrobes, he had whole rooms devoted to clothes. Kitchens, dining rooms, all were on the same floor and indeed on the same passage. The best rooms were all on the left-hand side going in, for these were the only ones to have windows, deep-set, round windows, looking over his garden, and meadows beyond sloping down to the river. This hobbit was a very well-to-do hobbit, and his name was Baggins. The Bagginses had lived in the neighborhood of the hill for time out of mind, and people considered them very respectable, not only because of most of them were rich, but also because they never had any adventures or did anything unexpected. Hmm. You could tell what a Baggins would say on any question without bother asking him. This is a story of how Baggins had an adventure and found himself doing and saying things altogether unexpected. He may have lost the neighbor's respect, but he gained, well, you'll see, and he gained anything, we'll see if we gained anything at the end. The mother of our particular hobbit, what, what is a hobbit? I suppose hobbits need some description nowadays since they have become rare and shy of the big people as they call us. They are, or were, a little people, about half our height and smaller than the bearded dwarves. Hobbits have no beards. There is little or no magic about them except the extraordinary everyday sort which helps them to disappear quietly and quickly when large stupid folk like you and me come blumbering along making a noise like elephants, which they can hear a mile off. Let's find yourself again. They are, they are inclined to be fat in the stomach. They dress in bright colors, chiefly green and yellow, wear no shoes because their feet grow naturally leathery soles and thick warm brown hair, like the stuff on their heads, which is curly, have long clever brown fingers, good natured faces, and laugh deep fruity laughs, especially after dinner, which they have twice a day when they can have it. Now, you know enough to go on with. As I was saying, the mother of this hobbit, Bilbo Baggins, that is, was the famous Belladonna Took. Or 
one of the three remarkable daughters of the old Took, head of the hobbits who lived across the water, the small river that ran at the foot of the hill. It was often said in other families that long ago, one of the Took ancestors must have taken a fairy wife. That was, of course, absurd, but certainly there was still something not entirely hobbit-like about them. And once in a while, members of the Took clan would go and have adventures. They discreetly disappeared and the families hushed it up. But the fact remains that the Tooks were not as respectable were not as respectable as the Bagginses, though they were undoubtedly richer. Not that Belladonna took not that Belladonna Took ever had any adventures after she became Mrs. Bungo Baggins. Bungo, that was Bobo's father, built the most luxurious hobbit hole for her and partially with her money that was to be found either under the hill or over the hill or across the water, and there they remained to the end of their days. Still, it is probable that Bilbo, her only son, although he looked and behaved exactly like a second edition of his solid and comfortable father, but something a bit queer in his makeup from the Took side, something that only waited for a chance to come out. The chance never arrived until Bilbo Baggins was grown up, being about 50 years old or so and living in the beautiful hobbit hole built by his father, which I have just described for you, until he had in fact apparently settled down immovably. By some curious chance, one morning, long ago, in the quiet of the world, when there was less noise and more green, and the hobbits were still numerous and prosperous, and Bobo Baggins was standing at his door after breakfast, smoking an enormous long wooden pipe that reached nearly down to his woolly toes. Oh, I think I got one of those back here. Ugh. Maybe we'll have to light this one up next time, give us a little bit of a deeper bowl. Gandalf came by. Gandalf, if you if you had heard only a quarter of what I have heard about him, and I have only heard very little of all there is to hear, you would be prepared for any sort of remarkable tale. Tales and adventures sprouted up all over the place wherever he went in the most extraordinary fashion. He had not been down that way under the hill for ages and ages. Not since his friend Old Took died. In fact, the hobbits had almost forgotten what he looked like. He had been away over the hill and across the water on business of his own since they were all small hobbit boys and hobbit girls. All that is unsuspecting, all that the unsuspecting Bilbo saw that morning was an old man with a staff. He had a tall pointed blue hat, long gray cloak, a silver scarf over which his long white beard hung down below his waist, and immense black boots. Good morning, said Bilbo, and he meant it. The sun was shining and the grass was very green. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Gandalf looked at him from under long bushy eyebrows that struck out that stuck out further than the brim of his shady hat. What do you mean? he said. Do you wish me a good morning, or do you mean that it is a good morning whether I want it or not? Or that you feel good this morning, or that it is a morning to be good on? Well all of them. All at once, said Bilbo, and a very fine morning for a pipe of tobacco out of the doors. Oh out of doors into the bargain into the bargain 
If you have a pipe about you, sit down and have a fill of mine. There's no hurry. We have all day before us. Then Bilbo sat down on a seat by his door, crossed his legs, and blew out a beautiful gray ring of smoke and sailed up into the air without breaking and floating away over the hill. Very pretty, said Gandalf, but I have no time to blow smoke rings this morning. I'm looking for someone to share in an adventure that I am right that I am arranging, and it's very difficult to find anyone. I should think so in these parts. We are plain quiet folk and have no use for adventures. Nasty, disturbing, uncomfortable things make you late for dinner. I can't think what anybody sees in them, said our Mr. Baggins. and stuck one thumb behind his braces and blew out another even bigger smoke ring. Then he took his morning letters and began to read, pretending to take no more notice of the old man. He had decided that he was not quite his sort and wanted him to go away. But the old man did not move. He stood leaning on his stick and gazing at the hobbit, gazing at the hobbit without saying anything till Bilbo got quiet uncomfortable, and even a little cross. Good morning, he said at last. We don't want any adventures here, thank you. You might try over the hill or across the water. By this, he meant that the conversation was at an end. What a lot of things you do use good morning for, said Gandalf. Now you mean that you want to get rid of me and that it won't be good until I move off. Not at all, not at all, my dear sir. Let me see, I don't think I know your name. Yes, yes, my dear sir, and I do know your name, Mr. Bilbo, Mr. Bilbo Baggins, and you do know my name, though you don't remember that I belong to it. I am Gandalf, and Gandalf means me. To think that I should have lived to be good-morninged by Belladonna Took's son, as if I was selling buttons at the door. Gandalf, Gandalf, good gracious me. Not the wandering wizard that gave old Took a pair of magical diamond studs that fastened themselves and never came undone until ordered. Not the fellow who used to tell such wonderful tales at parties about dragons and goblins and giants and the rescue of princesses and the unexpected luck of widow's sons. Not the man that used to make such particularly excellent fireworks. I remember those. Old Took used to have them on Midsummer's Eve. Splendid. They used to go up like great lilies and snapdragons and lab laburnums of fire and hanging in the twilight all evening. You will notice that Mr. Baggins was not quite so prosy as he liked to believe. Also, that he was very fond of flowers. Dear me, he went on, not the Gandalf who was responsible for so many quiet lads and lasses going off into the blue for mad adventures. Anything from climbing trees to visiting elves or sailing in ships, sailing to other shores. Bless me, life used to be quite inner, I mean, it used to be upset things badly in these parts once upon a time. I beg your pardon, but I had no idea you were still in business. Where else would I, would I be, said the wizard. All the same, I am pleased to find you remember something about me. You seem to remember my fireworks kindly, at any rate, and that is not without hope. Indeed, for, you, for your old grandfather Took's sake, and for the sake of poor Belladonna, I will give you what you asked for. I beg your pardon? I haven't asked for anything. Yes, you have. Twice now. I pardon. I give it to you. In fact, I will go so far as to send you on this adventure. Very amusing for me, very good for you, and profitable too. Very likely if you ever get over it. Sorry, I don't want any adventures. Thank you. Not today. Good morning. But please come to tea. Anytime you like. Why not tomorrow? Come tomorrow. Goodbye.
With this, the hobbit turned and scuttled inside his round green door and shut it as quickly as he dared, not daring to seem rude. Wizards, after all, are wizards. What on earth did I ask him to tea for? He said to himself as he went to the pantry. He had only just had breakfast, but he thought a cake or two and a drink of something would do him good after his fright. Gandalf, in the meantime, was still standing outside the door and laughing long but quietly. After a while, he stepped up and with a spike on the end of his staff, scratched a queer sign on the hobbit's beautiful green front door. Then he strode away just about the time when Bilbo was finishing his second cake and beginning to think that he had, he had escaped adventures very well. Hmm. Looking like we need to refill the pipe. While I'm doing this, thank you guys if you guys are staying this far and reading along with me. I'm having a blast right now. Um, if you would, if you've gotten this far, just so I know who has gotten this far and actually is reading along with me. Um, let me know your favorite character. If you've read these before and you have a favorite character in The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, anything like that, just let me know. I want to know what your favorite character is. Nice light. <clears throat> the next day, he had almost forgotten about Gandalf. He did not remember things very well, unless he put them down on his engagement tablet, like this. Gandalf, T Wednesday. Yesterday, he had been too flustered to do any of the thing of the kind. Just before tea time, there came a tremendous ring on the front doorbell. And then he remembered. He rushed and put on a kettle and put on another cup and a saucer and an extra cake or two and ran to the door. I'm so sorry to keep you waiting, he was going to say when he saw what it was not Gandalf at all. It was a dwarf with a blue beard tucked into a golden belt and very bright eyes under his dark green hood. As soon as the door was opened, he pushed inside just as if he had been expected. He hung his hood on the nearest peg and said, Dwalin, at your service, he said with a low bow. Bilbo Baggins, at yours, said the hobbit, too surprised to ask any questions for the moment. Oh, looks like it actually it wasn't needing a relight. It was needing a, a full repacking. Sorry, I got a little ashtray that's metal here, so. And if we keep this up, I'm gonna have to uh, invest in some more cast in blue. And you know what? If you guys are hanging out with me this far, not only tell me who your favorite character is, please give me a comment, like, and subscribe down below.
Well, good thing is, as I uh, took advantage of the tobacco pipes sale that they have going on right now and got myself a better lighter. So we won't have as many technical difficulties with all these cheap gas station lighters I've been using. There we go. Now, where did we leave off? Hmm. Let's see. Hmm. When the silence had followed, when the silence that followed had become uncomfortable, he added, I am just about to take tea. Pray come and have some with me. A little stiff, perhaps, but he meant it kindly. And what would you do if you had an uninvited dwarf came and hung his things up in your hall without a word of explanation? They had not been at the table long. In fact, they had hardly reached the third cake when there came an even louder ring at the bell. Excuse me, said the hobbit, and went off to the door. So you, so you have got here at last. That was what he was going to say to Gandalf this time, but it was not Gandalf. Instead, there was a very old-looking dwarf on the step with a white beard and a scarlet hood, and he too hopped inside as soon as the door opened just as if he had been invited. I see that you've begun to, they have begun to arrive already, he said when he caught sight of Dwellin's green hood hanging up. He hung his red one next to it and Balin at your service, he said with a hand on his breast. Thank you, said Bilbo with a gasp. It was not the correct thing to say, but they have begun to arrive, had flustered him badly. He liked visitors, but he liked to know them before they arrived and he preferred to ask them himself. He had a horrible thought that the cakes may run short. And then he, as the host, he knew his duty and stuck to it, however painful, he might have to go without. Come along, come along in and have some tea, he managed to say after taking a deep breath. A little beer would suit me better if it's all the same to you, my good sir, said Balin with the white beard. But I don't mind some cake, seed cake if you have any. Lots. Bobo found himself answering to his own surprise, and he found himself scuttling off to the cellar to fill a pint beer mug and then to the pantry to fetch two beautiful round seed cakes, which he had baked that afternoon for his supper after supper morsel. When he got back to Balin and Dwalin, when he got back, Balin and Dwalin were talking at the table like old friends. As a matter of fact, they were brothers. Bilbo plumped down the beer and cake in front of them. When, when loud came a ring at the bell again, 
and then another ring. Gandalf for certain this time, he thought as he puffed along the passage, but it was not. It was two more dwarves, both with blue hoods, silver belts, and yellow beards, and each of them carried a bag of tools and a spade. In, hop in they hopped as soon as the door began to open. Bilbo was hardly surprised at all. What can I do for you, my dwarves, he said. Keely at your service, said the one, and Feely, added the other, and they both swept off their blue hoods and bowed. At yours and your families, replied Bilbo, remembering his manners this time. Dwalin and Balin were here already, I see, said Keely. Let's, let us join the throng. Throng? thought Mr. Baggins. I don't like the sound of that. I really must sit down for a minute and collect my wits and have a drink. He had only just had a sip in the corner while the four dwarves sat at the round table and talked about mines and gold and troubles with the goblins and the and the depredations of dragons and lots of other things which he did not understand and did not want to for they sounded much too adventurous when ding dong ling dong his bell rang again, and as if someone, and as if some naughty little hobbit boy was trying to pull the handle off, someone at the door. He said, blinking. Some, some four, I should say, by the sound of it. Said Feely. Besides, we saw them coming along behind us in the distance. The poor little hobbit sat down in the hall and put his head in his hands, and wondered what had happened, and what was going to happen, and whether they would all stay for supper. Then the bell rang, again, louder than ever, and he had to run to the door. It was not, f it was not four, after all. It was five. Another dwarf had come along while he was wandering in the hall. He had hardly turned the knob before they were all inside, bowing and saying, At your service one after another, Dory, Nori, Ori, Oin, and Gloin were their names, and very soon two purple hoods, a gray hood, a brown hood, and a white hood were hanging on the pegs, and off they marched with their broad hands struck in their gold and silver belts to join the others. Already it had almost become a throng. Some call for ale, some for porter, and one for coffee, and all of them for cakes. So the Hobbit just kept very busy for a while. All right, guys. So we're gonna take this in parts. I greatly appreciate everyone that has uh, stuck around and is enjoying me reading the series and enjoying uh, going through this and smoking as much Capstan Blue as it takes to get me through all of the Tolkien books. So we will, uh, of course, have to order some more of this because I'm already two bowls in and we're going to burn through this pretty quickly because we're only 19 pages in. But I greatly appreciate it. And if you guys don't mind, comment, like, and subscribe down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.